black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. What is going on, my dudes and dudettes? Yo, honestly, so hype right now. My uncle just left for vacay. He said, take my spot. You can hold down the spot. So I get a whole ass kitchen. Nice one. Some good stuff there. To myself, I get freedom. I can cook, I can yell, I can scream. I can tell weird sex stories, hookup stories, any story I want. It doesn't really matter. If I'm looking a little sweaty, it's cause I am. Uh, it's a steamer out in Toronto. Oh wait, what? Hawaii life? What up Hawaii life? If you hear a little something in the background, we're just watching Hawaii life. Shout out to Hawaii life. We've got the patio. And it is hot out, guys. It is like 30 degrees, humidity is like 80%. It's smoggy, hot, gross. I'm in this like sport top. I probably got sweat stains. I just walked to the grocery store. Let's talk about that for a hot minute. Cause today, as you can tell by the title, we're gonna like to the T, building structure, recipe, everything, recreate In-N-Out burgers. Not doing any fries or any of that cause Let's be honest, in and out fries are negligible. But as you can see here, got these buns. I feel like they're the closest thing to it, just like a classic sort of like almost potato rolly, but not. Beef steak tomatoes, the big boys, they're gonna one slice should cover the entire bun. Of course, the iceberg lettuce. If that would get out of there. Obviously, we're going to have to reduce, take a bunch off and get it to that nice low down green crispy. Got some like almost, I think they're like kosher style, but I'm going to make some uh, dill pickle chips, like the coins out of that. And then white onion, we're going to caramelize some down into super dark caramel onions and then some uh, raw rings as well for the burger. And of course, Got the ground beef and I actually found medium, which is probably gonna come closer to a fattier, like 80-20 uh, type blend. So we got the medium ground beef, we make some nice thin patties. And you know, a little, a little something something for later. Just a little snack, a little Mars snack. Come on, shout out Mars. I love the nougat, I'm all about the nougat. All right, you guys, let's kick this off with making spread so it's literally this easy cup of mayo match that with like a third ketchup a tablespoon relish dash of vinegar just white vinegar will do don't go too heavy just a splish mix it up it's pretty in and outy to me so we're just gonna go down the center sort of like that thick beauty the whole ring I'm gonna just get rid of this bottom nice slice of tomato for each burger and that's about the thickness you want it's perfect all right I searched through the jar and I found the thickest porn star uh, pickle I could find I gotta go to the thickest part and get some coins out of it that's a coin when it's like this make them thin but not too thin Probably gonna need four per burger, I would say. So let's do like eight of them, maybe 10 for good measure. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Thin, but you know, a little bit of bite to them, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of thick. These guys use like deeper down in the core of the lettuce where it's mostly nice and green. So I'm actually just gonna take this and I'm gonna cut out almost like a square segment. Now we have a good chunk to work with of lettuce chunks that should perfectly fit our little burger buns. There we got it, our fresh ass toppings. All right, so we're just gonna let these babies sweat out and caramelize down, it's gonna take a while. You're gonna get sweatier than me at a hot yoga class, you know what I'm saying? But you want beef? I got beef, I got the 80-20 medium. So I'm eyeballing it, but I'm looking for like two ounce patties. You don't want them too big, you don't want them too thick. That, maybe just a bit more on it, I think. And then what I'm gonna do with it is lay down a piece of wax paper, pop it on said wax paper, 
take other wax paper and then you can just use a plate so it could like form into that, you know what I mean? Plate, smush it out. Try to make it as circular, as nice as possible. Give it a little twisty, nice and flat. And so this is what you end up with, a nice perfect circle, very McDonald's-esque, nice and thin. Okay, okay, okay. These guys are coming along nice, but we do want them darker. All right, that butter's bubbling, this pan's feeling, I think, nice and hot, so let's go in with a couple of buns. Got to do two at a time. That's about what you're looking for. Nice little crisp on there. I know in and out definitely gets a nice little crisp on their buns. All right, let's animal style these patties. The mustard patty. Melted some cheese on those suckers and they're ready to go. Yo, what is going on you guys? Back with another one. It's been a minute. Life's been hectic, but it is what it is. As you can see, different setting. I'm at my uncle's house. My uncle is away for like a month. He said, yo, come hold it down. And here I am. I wanted to recreate in and out as best as I could. I wanted to rep for the West Coast and I wanted to do it justice. I did a lot of research. I've eaten in and out before a few times, but in my in and out research, I realized that it is heavily about the way that you build the burger. The way, so when you bite it, it comes together in a certain way. In the beginning, I was gonna go with two doubles. I'm actually gonna do two singles and a double. And kinda do like an OG one and then an animal style and maybe like a crossbreed, like a scissor, like a scissor sisters, like a lesbian uh, style one. I've got it all, it's all cooked and ready to go. I wanna assemble it in front of you and tell you guys a story that actually coming back here to my uncles reminded me of, cause this is the first place I lived when I came to Toronto. Uh, it is a hookup story though. So without further ado, let's start building. It always starts bottom bun, toasted, all buns toasted. A healthy amount of spread on the bottom bun. If it's a true animal style double double, you got the four pickles down, then they go tomato slice, perfectly fitting on that bun. And then they go blanket of lettuce, like that. Patty with cheese, raw onion, whole rings. And let's get another cheesy patty on top. And I can't truly remember, but I'm gonna go with more spread just because it acts like glue. And y'all know me, I'm a saucy guy. I just want you guys to look at this and tell me how that's doing in terms of an in and out look. I think I'm doing pretty well. Patties may be a little thin, but I'm saying that's looking pretty bomb. Come on over, come on over, baby. So there's our few variations of the Bergs. Double, double, classic single, this weird lettuce thing, and then sort of an anim animal style single as well. But let's get to eating. I gotta take a bite into this double double. I knew I should have made the little bibs, the little burger bibs. Wow. You guys, that is so good. That medium ground beef makes all the difference. Having that extra bit of fat. Pour up a nice little DP. Double penetration. Not quite what happened in the story I'm about to tell you, but sort of, it was a, it was a four people hookup sort of thing. Two different rooms, but feet apart. So anyways, like I was telling you guys, when I first moved to Toronto, this is where I stayed. I stayed with my uncle. I came here for school. I think I was like 22 or so, 21. It was free room and board, whatever, close to my school. Da, 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 da. Moved here, I didn't really know anybody. While I was going to school, I didn't work or anything because my dad was like, yo, just focus on school. 
and you know don't get a job just like you know don't get distracted just focus on school So I was just going to school, living here, down in the basement. I was broke ass. Rarely had money to do anything. But so one day I'm walking home and this dude passed me and he was like two years younger than me, but he lived in my area back in Thunder Bay where I'm from and like went to a school near me. But I, I just knew him from the area and like I'd seen him around this shit before when we were like really young, like grade eight type shit. He rollerblades by me. We both do like a double take. Like when you know, you're like, is that, I know that guy. Double take. We don't say anything to each other. I get home. I think I messaged him or he messaged me on Facebook being like, yo, did I just see you on the streets of T.O.? And I was like, yeah, I thought that was you. He's like, are you living here? I'm like, yeah, man, I go to school here and shit. He's like, yeah, I moved here too for work. Let's grab drinks. So I'm like, sick, cool, where at? We're like, where do you live at? And he's like, I'm in Etobicoke. And I have like weird work schedule, uh, hours, but I'm off like next Tuesday or something. I think it, it was like a weekday. And he's like, you should come out, like check my place and we'll just hang out. Like there's like a, there's like all these bars near my house. So we'll just go out for some drinks, play some pool, whatever, pints, da, da, da. So hardly like like i know this guy like we know each other we know who we are we, we used to like a few times like cross each other's paths in thunder bay and stuff and he actually used to hang out with my younger stepbrother too and uh so i don't really know him that well but i'm like okay yeah for sure so the day comes i head out there Bring some drinks, bring some booze. Shows me his place. We have some pre-drinks and stuff. And we're vibing, like. Even though we don't really know each other, it's just like we have that, all the connection common, like it's just easy. So we're kind of drunk, tipsy, and we go out to like the pub. Like he's like, yeah, let's go get pints. Go to the pub, play some pool, whatever. Hooking up was not even in the pub. Like, A, I've never really hung out with this guy. So it's like, we're, we're not really on that level. And B, it's like, it's just like a Tuesday night. We're just trying to like say what's up and like hang out and like just chill. So we walk into the pub, go in, like we end up at a table sitting down with ourselves. When I came in, I, I did see this girl and the, the two girls. And we kind of like hit eyes or whatever for a second, but nothing like serious. I didn't think anything of it. So him and I do our thing for a while. For a couple hours, have our night. Go outside. I think I was like having a smoke because I smoked at this time. I don't smoke anymore really, but at this time I smoked.
and we still had alcohol at his house that we brought, that I brought. So we're hanging outside the fence outside of the pub, just smoking, and then we decide we're going to like head out his way. And right at the moment, these two girls come out and they start walking just ahead of us. But then we went to that, we were out kind of on the other side of the street and he just hollered some like sort of drunk whatever thing at them. And they stopped and were like very responsive. So we cross the street, start talking to them. So the one is hot, and the one is not. And so, of course, as guys do when you're trying to pick up girls, especially in, together, like you're like, who's gonna take one for the team? Like, you know what I mean? Are you gonna like hold me up and like? pull weight if you have to and then at the same time we're both like we're both going for like the hotter girl like we but we don't know who's like what she who she's really into but it became pretty apparent that it was me so we he, like we walk a few blocks back to his spot and I actually remember the girl's name it was Victoria I can't remember what the other one was And this is the same time that I had my hernia. And so like I told you guys in that hernia story, uh, a hernia can fuck up your summer, fuck up some hookups, and it just causes you some general concern when you're going to hook up. It's just a little weird to have a hernia, to have like this like lump that comes out, protrudes by your balls or dick, balls, whatever. Just like it's not a nice thing to look at, to have, to see. To, it's just it fucks up your confidence and... I just I don't think a girl really appreciates a Franken lump down there. So we're now back at his house. Before we even got inside, like he's on his porch and I'm on the side of his house, and like I'm making out with the the hotter girl, and he's making out with like the duff or whatever. And <clears throat> so things are kind of going down, and in my head I'm like tripping. I'm like fuck. Like I know we're about to get a piece each, and it's like. I know I have this issue, like I have this lump and it's going to like freak her out unless I can like lay on my back and make sure it like stays in. Like, I don't know if I'm can handle this. I don't know if I, I'm ready to hook up with this lump. So I don't want to like freak her out or whatever and I don't have to explain it. So mm, it's caramelized onion. Wow. Should have had more of those. So we go downstairs. He's got his room and then right, like it's a bachelor apartment. So his room right outside of it is like little living room with the couch and like his kitchen and stuff. And his room, like his door was like one of those like Japanese like partitions. Like it was made out of like parchment paper and bamboo. Like you could like see shadows all up in it and literally like you could crash through it. Like, there was no sound barrier. It was like the sliding door of nothingness. So, her and I are on the couch. You know what I mean? Things are leading to things. And uh, they're over there in his room. And um, her and I are just starting to you know, de-clothe de essentially, like I'm getting all her stuff out, I got my shirt off and stuff, I'm going down on her, all the way down, doing all that stuff, and I'm trying to like prolong my shit coming out, because I'm like, as soon as it comes out, like this whole thing is going to just blow up and be over, she's going to like scream, freak out, run, whatever, I don't know, but as soon as my like Franken problem pops out the pants she like this shit's gonna be over and i'm gonna be like mortified <laughs> so i'm like trying to prolong this shit from happening or for at least so that she doesn't like go down on me so like i can just sneak sneak it in and just like she won't know you know 
Moment later, a split moment later, this girl, my, my buddy took it in his room, barrels through that door, that little shitty like sliding door that I told you, busts through it, like busts through it like the Kool-Aid guy, holding her mouth, chipmunk cheeks, full of obviously barf, gets just past us on the couch and just lets it fly everywhere, like everywhere. My buddy is like snapping because he's already taken one for the team. He's like, he doesn't even really want to hook up with this chick, but he's like, whatever, I'll just do it. And I guess she was giving him brain and like what kept going like too deep and then, and was like gagging and was like half throwing up. And then it led to like, well, you know, she's drunk and I don't know what if she ate food at the pub or whatever and et cetera, et cetera. But it activated, it triggered, and she just blew chunks everywhere. Killed the whole vibe. My buddy was just pissed at this point. He's like, he's like, I'm done. This is over. You guys need to get out of here. This is not happening anymore. Like, this whole thing is done and over. The girl I'm hooking up with runs to the bathroom. Instead of what you would assume that she would help her friend, what does she do? She goes, I can't remember her name. I remember her like screaming it, but fuck, I can't remember her name. She goes, da, da, da. why do you always do this? This always happens. You always fuck it up for me. <laughs> Every time I'm about to get, get, get a piece or score or whatever, she's like, you always have to go and ruin it for me. She's like, get out of here. Get your shoes and get out of here. I'm staying. And in this moment, I'm like having like a praise blast from the Lord. Because like I didn't want my, my shit to come out and freak her out. And like get me all embarrassed and crazy and weird. So I'm like, oh, thank Lord. Yes. Like I can't, I'm so glad this chick barfed off his dick. I'm like, this is a perfect excuse opportunity to be like, both y'all got to get out of here. <laughs> so that's what I did. I was like, look, I know it's all great, but like my, my buddy's super mad. Like, let me get your number. Da da da. We'll, we'll hook up again at some other point in time. I think you need to take care of your friend. She's clearly in a bad state. I, I don't think you should leave her out in these streets alone, wandering around, drunk, barfing. You know, vulnerable. Not knowing where she's at. And this girl was like begging to see. I'm like, no, sorry, it's not my place. It's my buddy's place. I don't call the shots. He's calling the shots. He's saying this is over. This is over. In the moment, it was all very shocking. But as you would imagine, as soon as they left, me and my buddy were just dying. Like, we were just laughing our heads off, but also being like, oh, this is so disgusting. And I'm sorry if this is, like, a little too graphic or whatever for this video, but it had to be said because that's what happened. And we were just in shock and awe, but also at the end of it, we were just, like, dying laughing. Like, we're like, is it, how did that just happen? Like, all we wanted to do was hang out for, like, the first time, go to a pub and chill, and it turned into, like bringing girls back hernias and gags and barfs and kool-aid men busting through doors so it was just like such a weird weird experience but a funny entertaining one nonetheless these burgers are solid caramelized onions were really really good i should have used them more that being said let me scoop some Bam, bam. Finish the three. For three. Three point shot. A little Dr. Pepper to wash it all down. And then I gotta go clean everything. You guys. I appreciate y'all watching. 
I appreciate you subscribing, coming through, but you guys need to, if you, if any of you ever shot a true video, the shit that goes into this when it's like a true, like a cooking and everything, like walk to the grocery store, get all the shit, walk back in sweltering heat, come home, film, like try to work clean, like have to prep everything, film it while it's happening, cooking it. Sit down, get it ready, find the angles, everything's nice, the lighting, eat it, da da da. And then after this, I gotta clean pens, the 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 grease that's been spitting up from the pen, all that shit. Like everything needs to get cleaned and sanitized. It is a process, but to labor of love. So until the next one, eat good, live well. Stay true.